Hey guys, it's Kay. I hope you're all well. Now today I'm going to be taking another look at Kali Unix for the Raspberry Pi 4. They've just released a new version, 2020.4. So for those of you who don't know what Kali Unix is, it's a Linux distribution that has been designed purely with digital forensics and software penetration testing in mind. Simply put, Kali is a Linux distribution designed purely for ethical hacking. It was released back in March 2013 and is still continually being developed and funded by offensive security. Now, utilizing the set of tools featured in Kali Linux, you can do numerous things, including things like cracking nearby Wi-Fi passwords, brute force remote connections, as well as many other things. So in short, using the tools provided with Kali, you can help check the security of your network or your applications using the Raspberry Pi. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get a copy of Kali Linux and install it on your Raspberry Pi 4, and then show you how to use one of the Wi-Fi cracking tools. So without further ado, let's get cracking. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, reviews and unboxings, I do everything including Fire Stick, Raspberry Pi and Android TV tips and tricks. So subscribe and hit the notification button. Now the first thing you want to do is head on over to the Offensive Security website. I've left links in the description below. As you can see, Offensive Security cater for a load of single board computers, but what we're looking for is the Raspberry Pi 4. And it is the second one down. So I'm going to select the 64-bit version. Just click on the link and it will automatically start downloading. Now if you do have a flaky internet connection, you can choose to download the torrent file. This will ensure you get the full file without any errors. So guys, once the download is complete, you'll need some software to transfer it to your SD card. Now I'm using the Raspberry Pi Imager, but you could also use Berlina Etcher. I'll leave links in the description below where you can get this software. Now once you've got Pi Imager downloaded and installed, click on Choose OS. And we want to scroll down to Use Custom, which basically means we're using our own software other than the ones listed in the menu. Now this will open up a window and you basically need to navigate to where you downloaded the Kali image file and just select it and then click on choose SD card which is the middle button and from here we need to select the SD card you have inserted in your PC or Mac. Now I'm using a 32GB card but 16GB should suffice. Now if you followed all those steps the right button should become pressable. Just click on it and then press yes on the new window that opens up. Ok you're on your way. So what will happen now is that the Kali software will be written and then verified onto your SD card. Now this shouldn't take more than 5-10 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer. Now once it's complete, you should get the following message. Just click on continue and you're ready to go. Just remove the SD card from your PC and insert it into your Raspberry Pi. And then power on and then watch it boot up. Now the first boot should take longer than normal as it's setting up the environment. Now if all went well, you should get the login screen which looks something like this. You'll be prompted to enter the username and password. So the default username is Kali and the default password is Kali. And that's it guys, we are into the desktop. Now the first thing I noticed was that they cleaned up this desktop considerably. The resolution seems to have been bumped up to HD quality like. And we've got a more snazzy looking desktop wallpaper. So taking a look around, on the top right hand corner, we've got the button to log out, restart, shut down and then also switch user. And next to that we've got a little padlock sign so we can quickly lock the screen. Next to that we've got a button like icon. And it's letting me know my wireless mouse and keyboard are discharging. And we've got something called presentation mode and power management settings. And next to that we've got our notifications bell. And currently I've got no notifications. Great to see I can switch to do not disturb mode. The next icon along is the volume rocker. And next to that one we've got our network connections. So I'm currently using Ethernet but I can easily switch to Wi-Fi. Just select the network and click on it. And it'll bring up a box and we just enter our password for our network. And click on connect. Now a quick look back on the network settings and we can see I'm connected to my network. And the last thing on the top bar is the calendar and time. So on the desktop we've got our trash icon, we've got a file system icon. And if we click on that we're going to get a shortcut to our file system. Always handy to have. And on the same note we've also got a quick shortcut to our home file system. Equally handy to have. Now along the top right hand side of the menu bar we've got a space for all our virtual desktops. And here we can switch between our numerous desktops. And if we right click on that space we get various settings for our workspaces. And we can add new items to these individual spaces. Now next to that we've got the Kazan tool. This basically lets you take videos of your desktop environment along with screenshots if you need. And this looks like a great tool because you've got so many options you can choose from. And next to that we've got the terminal emulator icon. Clicking on that's going to bring up the terminal and that's all pretty straightforward. Next to that we've got a shortcut to our home Kali folder and next to that we've got a shortcut to close all open windows on your desktop. So for example if I've got a few folders open up on the desktop which I don't want anyone to see as they're peering over my shoulder, I quickly click on that icon and it's all gone. Now clicking back on that icon will restore all the folders. Now next to that we've got the main menu icon. And as you can see there's a lot to see here. And in fact there's more sections here than the previous version of Kali I looked at. And this makes sense as all the ARM images come with Kali Linux default meta package installed 
bringing them in line with the rest of the releases, so more tools are available when you first boot. Now previously you had to install these manually from the terminal. Now like I mentioned earlier, the screen resolution seems to have been bumped up. Taking a look at the display settings, we can actually see 1824 by 924 which to me seems like an odd resolution to default to. Not sure why they've done that. Anyway, in the Advanced tab we can configure any extra displays we add. So back to the main menu and in the settings, you can see that Kali Unix is highly customizable. There's numerous ways of fine tuning the environment to the way you want it. So under the Usual Apps folder, you'll find your Usual Apps, which includes Accessories, Development, Graphics, Internet, Multimedia, Office, Other and System. And in Accessories you've got your Standard Task Manager, which gives you your CPU and Processes and Memory Usage. And you can filter out what you see here by selecting the Settings menu and then just toggling on and off what you want to see. Now back in the main menu, we can see we've got all our hacking tools neatly organized in folders. So depending on what area you're going to be focused on, you can easily find what you're looking for. So currently I'm in the information gathering folder. Now you can further narrow down what you can do by looking at these subfolders. So for example here, we've got a lot of tools for information analysis and information gathering. And under vulnerability analysis, it's a similar story. So we can see Kali Linux is mainly used for advanced penetration testing and security auditing as it contains several hundred tools which are geared towards various information security tasks such as penetration testing, security research, computer forensics and reverse engineering. Now you might be asking, is Kali Linux illegal? Well the answer is no it isn't, as it is just an operating system. However, it is a tool for hacking too and when someone uses it, especially for hacking, it's illegal. Now it's legal if you install it for useful purposes like learning or teaching or use it in a way to strengthen your network or your software. Because of course it is legal to install any operating system which is licensed and available for download. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at one of the cracking tools. And the tool I'm going to be looking at is called the Fern Wi-Fi Cracker. Now despite its name, the Fern Wi-Fi Cracker is a wireless security auditing and attack software program. The program is able to crack and recover WEP, WPA and WPS keys, and also run other network-based attacks on wireless or ethernet-based networks. Now this is a new feature, it's requiring you to enter the root password, which is a welcome addition. Once it opens up, you'll get the following window. So to start scanning a network, we need to select an interface. In the pull down menu, select WLAN 0. And click OK on the tip settings. Next, click on the button scan for access points. Now that's scanning for networks, and now once it's found some networks, it will show up in this box here. And there you go, it's found two networks. So click on the Wi-Fi WPA network button, and you'll get the following box. And from here, we're going to select the network we want to crack. So I'm going to select this one. Now before we select the attack button, we need to set up a file for the Fern tool to read. Now this file contains all the passwords it'll use against the network to try to obtain access. So what we're going to do is go down to where it says current dictionary file and click on the button next to that. And from here you just simply browse to where you have your text file containing your list of passwords that you're going to use against your network. So mine's called common text, I simply select and OK. And then go back up and click on the attack button. So now the Fern Wi-Fi cracker will go through that list of passwords, applying each password in turn to that network. And it will keep on going until it finds the password or it runs out of passwords in the text file. Now if it does successfully crack the password, it will notify you. Now as well as being a hacking and cracking machine, Kali Linux on your Raspberry Pi 4 can act as your daily driver because as you've seen, you can install all of your Office Suite software. And it comes pre-installed with Mozilla Firefox for all your browsing needs. And as you can see, 1080p works flawlessly. In the big city. Anyway, guys, that's my quick rundown of the latest version of Kali Unix on the Raspberry Pi 4. And as usual, if you found this video helpful, give us a like and maybe even a subscribe. And then I'll see you all in the next one.